Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One was released in 2018, we were frozen in wonder as we watched a fictional immersive digital universe accessible through VR glasses, where anything and everything is possible. At the time, there were similar virtual spaces for VR and AR glasses in our physical world, such as Horizon, Rec Room, and Roblox. But the experiences they offered were very limited. They were nothing like the Oasis. Fast forward to 2021 and it looks like sci-fi is quickly becoming reality. The recent announcement of Facebook's metaverse might just be one of the most important innovations since the creation of the internet. It comes with the Meta AR Glasses. Are we really witnessing the birth of the Oasis? What are the Meta AR Glasses, and how do they work? Join us today as we take a deep dive into Facebook's metaverse, where we will explore what this digital world is, and the Meta AR Glasses that will allow us to be a part of it. In October of 2021, Facebook officially changed its name to Meta. This change was a strategic move meant to usher in a technology they had been working on for the better part of a decade, an immersive digital universe. Their first solid attempt at creating this was with the social virtual world Facebook Horizon. However, it never took off, and at the moment, it is in an invite-only phase for beta testers. With a recent surge in popularity of NFTs, cryptocurrency, and the blockchain, dreams of a decentralized metaverse appear to be assembling. Facebook's metaverse takes up a section of that digital universe, but it also introduces a bridge to this new world that opens an unfathomable realm of possibilities. We are talking about possibilities that will take us closer to an immersive digital world, which you must admit will be cool, whether or not you agree with the company's policies. If our interaction with the metaverse was restricted to a glass screen, it would be just another bland invention. If all we could ever do to explore this new world was swipe and click, would there even be a point? For example, Decentraland is a digital world on the blockchain, where users play games and buy and own lands using cryptocurrency. While the concept of this platform is as intriguing as it is promising, one problem it faces is its lack of immersiveness. Imagine this, what if you could be transported into the digital world of Decentraland? What if you could walk on a digital land that you bought in real time? This is the question that Facebook is answering with the Meta AR glasses, and thankfully, they are not alone. For the past decade, companies like Microsoft, Apple, Metamaterial, and some other tech companies have been trying to bridge the gap between our physical world and the virtual world. There are two methods that they have employed over the years, and it is important that you are familiar with them in order to fully understand the possibilities of this move for immersiveness. They are virtual reality, or VR, and augmented reality, or AR. If you are familiar with some of the many side projects these tech companies dabble in, then you might have heard these two terms thrown around a couple of times. VR refers to a digital environment provided by a computer, where users can experience, interact, and determine what happens in the digital environment. AR refers to an enhanced version of our physical world, where we can view and interact with digital elements superimposed within our physical world. In simpler terms, VR is the oasis in Ready Player One, and AR is the cool stuff that Tony Stark interacts with in his lab. The past decade has seen these companies choose different sides. Apple and Metamaterial have focused mostly on AR technology. Facebook has seen incredible success with their VR devices, and Microsoft has been experimenting with hybrids that they call MR. Ultimately, all of their efforts have been directed towards bridging the gap between our physical world and the digital world. There have been big wins, and there also have been big losses. Back in 2013, Google released its Google Glass, a device that had two functions. It was a pair of glasses and a hands-free smartphone. At the time, it was ambitious, and Google hoped that it would push the envelope for things to come in the AR sector. However, the reverse was the case. People hated it, and the technology met a painful demise over privacy issues. Around the same time, Facebook entered into VR gaming by acquiring Oculus from a boy genius for a sweet sum of $2.6 billion. Soon after, they also launched a tethered VR headset called the Oculus Rift. It was received well by industry critics, and fans bought it in droves while it raised the bar for what was obtainable with immersive digital devices. In 2016, Microsoft announced its own glasses called the HoloLens. It combined the technologies of both VR and AR to produce real-time holographic projections that allowed user interaction. They called their technology Mixed Reality, or MR. Its AR features were impressive at the time, but it never saw wide-scale adoption. Apple, on the other hand, had been exploring VR and AR technologies for more than 10 years without officially launching any dedicated product. However, they progressively updated the software of their flagship iPhones and iPads to support both VR and AR features. The real icing on the cake was when they launched the AR Kit in 2019, and it led to a surge in user-generated AR contents and experiences. It became very useful in the AEC, art, and educational sectors. For quite some time, a heavy rumor about the Apple Glasses and the Apple AR headset were floating around. These devices are different. 
While it is rumored that the Apple glasses will have the privacy feature, which will give the users of the glasses the ability to blur their iPhones from everyone else but themselves, the Apple Augmented Reality or Virtual Reality headset could be a costly 8K headset whose functions no one knows for certain. In September of 2021, Facebook became more intentional with its use of AR technology. Originally, they used it in their Oculus HMDs for room-scale tracking before revamping it with their pass-through API. But it was their partnership with Ray-Ban that really raised everyone's eyebrows. They partnered with Luxottica to manufacture Ray-Ban Stories, a series of smart glasses that allowed its users to record and share images and short videos, listen to music, and take calls. While this might not seem too different from the functionalities of a smartphone, it is a very important move for Mark Zuckerberg, who called it an important milestone on his path to an immersive augmented reality. In 2020, Facebook had announced Project Aria, which featured AR-enabled glasses that gave the users the ability to map out the terrain of public and private spaces. This technology was also an important piece in Facebook's move toward the metaverse. Now, Facebook has raised the bar far above what any other industry player has shown so far. At Connect 2021, they announced an ambitious device called Project Nazare, the first ever consumer augmented reality glasses. This is the bridge to Facebook's metaverse. But we may wait for quite some time, because the technology required to develop an ultra-slim but powerful AR glass is still in its infancy, and the prototype has not yet been miniaturized. In other words, this device is still too big for adoption. At Connect 2021, we are given an extensive preview of the boundless possibilities of Project Nazare in a demo video. Mark Zuckerberg led us through a simulated concept of what a scene in Project Nazare would look like. We witnessed as users messaged themselves over WhatsApp and organized a game night, when the avatars of the user's friends appeared in his physical living space as they participated in the game. It was a breathtaking hybrid of both VR and AR tech. Zuckerberg has admitted that there is still a lot that needs to be achieved before the glasses become a reality. The device will have to house radios, projectors, cameras, customer silicon chips, speakers, sensors, and hologram displays while looking as sleek as the Ray-Ban stories. At the core of their innovative drive is the proprietary AR software called Spark AR, which is Facebook's response to Apple's AR Kit and Google's similar AR Core. Other features that Project Nazare will integrate are hand and full body tracking, which when combined with the Spark AR will enable users to interact with digital objects in their physical space. Facebook wants users of their Meta AR glasses to be proactively supported by the device. For this to happen, the device's integrated AI assistant needs to be aware of the environment of the user, what they are looking at, and what their intentions are. So far, there has been considerable progress. During the demo, the director of Meta Research, Michael Abrash, gave a glimpse of what his team had been working on. We were transported into a model apartment, where they were able to identify every object within the environment according to its form and function. The Meta AR glasses could also recognize what object the user was looking at and determine that user's subsequent actions. As exciting as Project Nazare looks, Zuckerberg has given a 5-10 to 10 year timeline for its completion, which might seem like a bummer to many. 10 years is a long time. The obstacles the device has to overcome go beyond shrinking important bits and parts. One other issue that it will face is data speed. Meta's chip manufacturer, Qualcomm, has stated that for the live VR AR to work seamlessly, the device will need a minimum data of 200 megabytes per second. Most of the world uses 4G data, and it moves at an average of 30 megabytes per second. At that speed, the device would be useless for its main function. 5G can achieve this number easily, but the network has not been properly developed for global adoption. What the metaverse and its AR glasses need is time and our patience. In 2018, no one would have imagined that an Oasis-like project would be announced as soon as 2021. And if we are lucky, we might not have to wait 10 years for the metaverse and its glasses to become available for our consumption. Now, it is important to keep in mind that Facebook's intentions will always be a cause for concern. Their name change was a suspicious move that was interpreted as a silly ploy to mend their tarnished reputation. Many people have asked why the company is spending billions on their metaverse. Many people have answered that it is for the trillions they are expecting. While Facebook has a track record for always placing profits first, there is no denying that they are at the forefront of innovation in this sector. What they are working on is revolutionary, and if they succeed, maybe down the line, we might have a competition that is more consumer-centric. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment sections below, and I'll wait for you in the next video. Yeah.